Remember this? Pretty hideous, isn't it? Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Now, if you'd have watched the last project video, which was hopefully this one, um, you can't forget this piece. It's pretty hideous and I do not like it at all. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take off the surface again, back to where I was. I'm then going to sand it all up like I did before, sanding sealer, uh, but this time, instead of the primer and white paint, I'm just gonna do black paint and no masking tape either. Now, good thing about using paint like this, it dries really quickly. I literally put this on probably 10 minutes ago, and that is now fully touched dry. So I've now got my blank canvas back again. There's no primer or white paint under this. The black paint, I mean, I hope it shows on the camera there, but you can really see the grain through this. Now, last time I did this, I started off with this phosphorant paint, and last time I did this, I really watered it down. I'm going to apply these again with the little plastic bags so this time I'm going to probably do three areas again and that may change as I go over time. So as I said I'm not going to thin this down this time. I'm just going to whoops stick some blobs on and that's probably quite a lot there so I will probably pick some of that up. I'm going to pick some of that up, I think. As you can see, this is really thick. Now, last time I went for the violet, red, blue, gold, and I'm also going to this time introduce the green. I'm not going to put the turquoise in. I'll start off with a bit of green on here. Put some blobs down like that, and the violet, and some blue, and then some red. And then finally the gold. I'm going to start this one and take out some of the thicker areas and to give an extra effect on this I'm also going to use the airline to just blow the paint a bit so where it's thicker Now just using the compressor like that has created all this more texture pattern and it's thinned it out in places and at the same time where I had some of the sharp lines 
of where I was pushing the bag down, I've managed to hide all those. I will let that dry off a bit now and see what that comes up like. And I may find that, depending on how some of these colours dry, that I need to top them up a bit. Now, this has been left an hour or so to dry. And I don't know whether how well this actually shows up on the camera there, but there's some really nice flashes of colour in there. But when you see a, a bit of an angle, you tend to get this. It's almost like a creamy effect, um, which I think is from the phosphorant paint. So I want to try and just add a little bit more colour in here. So I'm just going to use a fresh bag here. And rather than put the paint directly on there, I just want to put a little bit of red on the bag. Just like that. And I can then try and pick, just put some odd blobs down to start with. Just smear them in a bit. A little bit of green over the top as well. I'll let that dry off again now. Now that's dried again. Um, when you look at it directly or switch it around, it does pick up a lot more colours on there, but it does still have that very sort of like pale green to it at an angle. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the gold gilt cream again, again around the edges. But I don't want to do it so bold this time. Uh, I still don't want a very straight line all around the edge i do want it a little bit rough so i'm going to slowly put some on last time I'm going to leave that overnight now to fully dry then I can give it some gloss lacquer and then get it back on the lathe to turn out the middle piece
Now I gave this about four or five coats of spray lacquer, left it overnight, come out this morning, turned out the inside, it's had a couple of coats of wood wax 22 and a coat of microcrystalline wax. And I've just literally just gone over with a buffing mop on the whole piece as well because of the grain and everything on here, you do get little pieces of dust all collecting there, which really shows up when you've got black. Am I happy? I'm a lot happier than I was last weekend, but I still think it's far from being where I'd like it to be. The things I really like about this, I do like the black paint, and I especially like this gold gilt rim on here. I think the gold gilt rim this time is a lot better because it's a lot more subtle just on the edge. And I do like it because it's a little bit wavy. It's not a very precise defined edge. I also really like a lot of the colors that are appearing here and they probably don't show up fully on the camera and not even in all the pictures because you've really got to catch them in the right light before they, they start sparkling at you. The thing I think where this is probably let down a bit is when you do catch it at the wrong light, you get a lot of this sort of like paley cream color. Now this does glow in the dark. Uh, I have actually tested it. And I mean, I don't know whether it actually shows on there. You can, hopefully you can see where some of the colors are. And especially on the top here, it's just above where this is. You, you, you might be able to see where the, some of the glow in the dark paint is there. Hopefully, yeah. And that's where I would probably have liked that as a thin base throughout the whole piece to start with, or certainly in the big areas of the piece to start with, because they would have just given it that background rather than maybe a lot of this creamy mix. Now I do like the idea of where the paint has gone on fairly thick and I've used the air compressor just to blow the paint around. It gives you that extra texture. It gives it more of a shape. I think the black paint has certainly suited well on this. It, it, I think it really did need that big contrast. I think had I used the ebonizing solution, it would have been more of a, a, a muddy black than sort of a jet black like this. So I'm quite happy with the way this has turned out. Like I say, just minor little things. Um, some of the paints could have been spread a bit more thinly in places, uh, especially the edges. So I'm quite happy for it as a finished piece. I certainly this time don't want to go back and restart again. Now, the, the reason why I put the last video up rather than just do all this in one was because I, th I think it's important for people to see where you make mistakes, where things don't always come out as you planned. I mean, even this still hasn't come out as I planned. Because I think if if we all practice things first of all and only put up that final video of where the thing has finally come out correctly, then nobody learns anything. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, whether you've done something similar to this. I think the little plastic bag approach of spreading the paint around works really well. It's an, an ideal way of mixing it and hopefully trying to thin it out on places as well. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next project video.